So you've bought a fancy DSLR because you're tired of your smartphone photos coming out looking like crap if your shooting environment isn't perfect. How many Instagram filters have been used, applied over the years just to hide the fact that your original photos looked awful? But even though an SLR is an incredibly versatile tool, the maze of settings and options to get your pictures looking just right can feel like an unsolvable puzzle to a photography novice. But one of the most important settings is also one that is not too hard to get the hang of. I'm talking about ISO, which stands for International Standards Organization, which I know makes a ton of sense. ISO settings are extremely useful for taking photos when the lighting around you is less than ideal. A lot of you might remember the days when we all bought rolls of film instead of SD cards, and the primary way one roll of film seemed to differ from another was the film's speed, given by ISO or ASA ratings like 100, 200, and 400. Although it's hard to buy film anymore, this is essentially the same system that's used in modern digital cameras. But instead of measuring film speed, ISO is now a measurement of how much light reaches the image sensor. You can learn more about that up here. So why does this matter? Well, each time you double the ISO rating, the amount of light that the camera needs to produce an image is cut in half. Suppose you're trying to take that perfect family photo, but then keeping everyone in focus at f2.8 on any lens can be difficult. So you stop down your lens to increase your depth of field, but now your shot is way too dark. But instead of using your on-camera flash, which can render backgrounds fairly dark, you can increase your ISO to see all those wonderfully painful smiles that have been held over all the time you took to take that photo. Increasing the ISO setting is also a great idea if you have to utilize a high shutter speed, such as when you're doing sports photography. Too low of an ISO setting will make a fast skating hockey player or a soccer ball hurtling towards the goal look blurry, properly exposed. So it's critical for people who shoot sports for a living to get the ISO setting correct to work with a high shutter speed. So is it a good idea to just leave your ISO on a high setting all the time? Given the obvious advantages of a high ISO, you might think so, but there are some significant drawbacks as well. Higher ISO settings tend to introduce noise to your photograph, which usually makes your pictures look very grainy. Since the camera's high sensitivity at a high ISO will also make undesirable noise to be amplified. Well-made modern SLRs can usually keep noise at a higher ISO to an acceptably low level, but if you crank the ISO to a high enough point, your pictures will start to show the grain very easily. Lower ISO settings also tend to produce more realistic looking colors, so if you have even lighting, it's probably a good idea to use the lowest ISO setting you can without making your pictures look too dark. Just as there were good reasons for people to buy 100 speed film back in the day, there are still good reasons to use the lowest ISO setting possible on your digital camera, such as when you're taking pictures of a still object in clear sunlight, but if you're concerned about having accurate shadows and highlights and retaining the most detail in your dynamic range, a higher ISO is still often the way to go, especially if you're trying to shoot in a poorly lit environment. So next time you're struggling with getting just the right shot, remember to do a quick check on your ISO setting and save yourself the pain of trying to fix it in Photoshop or having a photo that looks like a drunken concert selfie. And speaking of getting your lighting exactly right, Hive Lighting. They're one of the leading plasma lighting manufacturers for all production needs. They have three different fixtures that can be used in many versatile ways, from theater production on stage to the lighting we used for this video. The Wasp, which is our fixture of choice, is one of the lowest power draw lights I've ever used, coming in at 273 watts and giving me the output of an incandescent light that would easily draw six times more power, which makes it a lot nicer on the office power bill when I accidentally leave lights on. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. If you didn't like this video, give it a dislike. And if you have any other ideas for videos on this channel, please leave a comment down below. While you're done doing all of that, maybe check out a Channel Superfund video where we had way too many glow sticks, so we played glow stick dodgeball in a dark gym. Yeah. That's what we did. Don't forget to subscribe and follow.